In 2022, experts convened to establish a consensus on greater trochanteric pain syndrome, a condition affecting the hip. They addressed differential diagnoses and management strategies, including physiotherapy, injections, surgery, and prognosis. Here's what they concluded. <laughs> Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Greater trochanteric pain syndrome, or GTPS, encompasses various conditions, including external snapping hip syndrome, gluteal tendinopathy, gluteal tendon tearing, proximal IDB syndrome, and gluteal bursitis. Previously, a bursitis was believed to be the primary driver, but recent data challenges this assumption. Inflammation of the bursa is often absent, and histological differences between patients with so-called bursitis and healthy individuals are minimal. Ultrasound and MRI findings show a higher prevalence of tendon tearing or tendinopathy, but not in all cases. Consequently, the term GTPS is now used. Now, how do patients with GTPS typically present? Females in their 40s to 60s commonly experience lateral or posterior pain around the greater trochanter, and it may radiate into the buttock or lateral thigh. They often report pain during activities like walking, lying on the affected side, or climbing stairs. While there are no specific tests for GTPS, a few are discussed. If your patient doesn't experience pain and upon palpating the greater trochanter, GTPS may be excluded. However, painful palpation doesn't guarantee a diagnosis. Tests such as the Faber resisted hip abduction, resisted external derotation tests, and Trendelenburg can provide additional insights. Remember, always interpret special tests within the overall clinical picture. Four differential diagnoses to consider are hip osteoarthritis, lumbar spine pathology, proximal hamstring tendinopathy, and deep gluteal syndrome. Morning stiffness and groin pain indicate hip osteoarthritis, while lower back pain radiating below the knee suggests lumbar spine involvement. Posterior thigh pain and tenderness near the ischial tuberosity may indicate a proximal hamstring tendinopathy, while posterior hip pain with tenderness lateral to the ischial tuberosity may point toward deep gluteal syndrome. Impairments to consider in GTPS include hip abductor weakness, pelvic control on the frontal plane, and iliotibial band tightness. These factors increase compressive forces on the gluteal tendons. The lead author of this paper proposed a classification system for GTPS. Regarding treatment, a progressive exercise program is recommended, ranging from submaximal isometrics to heavy load and eccentric exercises based on patient tolerance. Additionally, educate patients on activity modification and posture. Strategies to minimize single limb loading in daily activities are essential. For example, sitting down to put on pants instead of standing can help alleviate symptoms. The author suggests temporary modifications. Further recommendations can be found in our previous video based on the Grimaldi paper. In addition to education and exercise, pharmacological agents like corticosteroids or PRP injections may be considered. However, their use varies depending on the patient's demographics and there are conflicting research results. If injections are performed, follow up with gait training, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercises as injections do not address modifiable factors like abductor weakness, pelvic control, and IDB tightness. Surgery is indicated based on specific criteria defined by the consensus committee. Factors to consider for surgical intervention include inadequate relief with conservative measures, imaging evidence, loss of abduction against gravity, severe gait deviations, and tissue quality. Prognostic indicators affecting surgical outcomes include age, BMI, tear size, tissue quality, tobacco use, diabetes, and low physical function. After tendon repair surgery, physiotherapeutic treatment is recommended, although evidence is limited. Here's a proposed treatment program by the authors. Please note that many recommendations are based on low quality evidence, requiring further high quality research to confirm or reject. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. 
visit physiotutors.com for a wealth of knowledge and make sure to watch our other video on postural recommendation for GTPS. I am Max for Physiotutors and I will see you in another video.